Hey, Tom. What's your favorite kind of wine? Uh, I like a wine that is as sweet as you are. Uh, so that means I'd like a really a white wine. <laughs> <laughs> a really white wine. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. And I'm Carly Bird. Well, 13. Lucky 13 or unlucky 13, I guess is what this would be. Ooh, uh-oh. Yeah, I know, right? Um, Didn't even think of it that way till you said it. So great. Well, yeah, you know. Oh, Friday the 13th movies. We should do that. Oh, sorry. Getting off track there. Sorry about that, guys. Um, today, we got a really fun uh, episode, I think, in store. We're doing something a little bit different with the stories. Not a, a, um, a cryptid famous on the internet. Not a massive legend that everyone knows by name. Um, this is a very localized story. Uh, both have to do with the area we live in. We live in the uh, Northern Virginia, D.C. metropolitan area, and we found two really cool ghost stories um, to kind of like complement this area, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, another quick thing to know is the contest is actually still going on. Uh, please submit some story ideas to spiritsandghoststories at gmail.com. The first five automatically get gift cards, and we will pick a lucky one that wins a $50 gift card. Furthermore, if you leave us a review on iTunes, you'll also be getting a gift card. Uh, contest goes up until Halloween, uh, October 28th. So there's still some slots available if you guys want to make get some free money. So pretty good, pretty good deal, right? Yeah, definitely. So before we get into uh, today's episode, Carly, what are we drinking? We are drinking a sweet white wine called Dulce. Uh, yes. It is from... Our sponsor, Castanel Vineyards, located in Leesburg, Virginia, and um, it is one of the wines that they are uh, featuring for the month of October. It is. I, I am very much a sweet person. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy it. Um, it. It just a sweet wine you can have as a dessert thing. You can sometimes pair it with different foods, depending on what your palate's like. It's just an all, all around, I like having a sweet wine. I'm not against dries and white, you know, dry reds, dry whites. I feel it has to be paired with a meal or some or some cheese or something like that, but a, a dry, a, a sweet all the time, yeah. anytime. Yep, we know it. So, I believe you have the first story, correct? I do. I was sent the story by Castanel Vineyards because they have a haunted winery. They have a description of why they think it's haunted and um, what actually goes on that makes them believe. Everyone on campus that works there and lives there believes in these ghosts because they have all experienced this entity or entities. So let's get into it. Mm. I'm going to tell you the tale of the Casanel Vineyards and Wineries Residence Ghosts. Nelson and Casey de Souza purchased the property for Castanel Vineyards in 2006. We opened our stone barn tasting room to the public in 2008. The stone barn dates to before the Civil War, 1841. We opened our main building in 2014. The original structure was a 1900s drying barn. It did not have the cellar clearance we needed for the winery so we had to demolish the drying barn in 2010. Now the yellow barn building takes its place. We were told there was a man who committed suicide in the barn sometime in the, 18, in the 1980s. We have affectionately named our spirit Stuart and wonder if it may be this gentleman. He's a very friendly ghost, but likes to pull some pranks. Stuart, what a name. <laughs> it is a friendly name. He is more active at night, especially when we are closing. Sometimes we hear knocking on the doors, coughing, and slamming doors. During the day, he tends to make items fall randomly, especially decorations, and hides things, or at least we blame him for it. Our log cabin is one of the oldest buildings on site. The log cabin half dates to the to 1751 while the brick side was added in the 1960s. The Poston family who lived there during the 1800s up to the 1920s had lots of great stories for us. 
The land was owned by Quakers in the very beginning and used for cattle and farmed just for the family's use. One of the ancestors walked to Ball's Bluff Battlefield during the Civil War. Wow. Yes. All that way. Just to get their only horse back. Can because I say something real quick? I'm sorry. But let's picture that. Like, I know we live in D.C. We drive. Could you imagine back then, like, I'm just going to walk over 30 miles? Maybe. Okay, let's say 20. Do you know anybody right now, normal people, by the way, they're like, you know what? I got to go to, uh, so where we live, guys, it's um, Purseville to Leesburg, which is about 10, 15 miles. So let's just say you're like, you know what? I got to go to the shop. Do, 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 do. Got to get my horse. It's like, no, that's just such a different, I can't grasp that when people are like, ah, it's just a 10 mile walk in the woods. Like it's, I don't know. I just, to me, it's fascinating. It, no, just imagine it. Okay. Just say somebody stole your car. Which is what a horse is, basically, right? Right. Yeah. Well, now you have no way to have transportation going forward to think, okay, I'm going to take a 30-mile hike once to go get my car because I know exactly where it's at mm -hmm. versus, you know, which is being like, oh, they can have it. I'll just walk everywhere. Yeah, it, it's, I don't know. To me, that's always fascinating when you hear things like that. Like, it, it's such a small detail, but to me, it's like, we wouldn't do that nowadays. We couldn't even comprehend doing that. No, it's we couldn't like, comprehend. Would you like to walk five minutes or pay $30 for an Uber? It's like, ah, oh, you know. You know that <laughs> <is>. <laughs> anyway. That's the truth. Um, You made me lose my space, uh, so. You're welcome. Okay. One of the ancestors walked to Ball's Bluff Battlefield during the Civil War to get their only horse back because the Union Army commandeered it for their own use. She was a feisty lady and convinced them to give it back. We do believe the log cabin has a spirit as well. She, we think, is a bit temperamental and seems to be jealous of modern day conveniences. So she's the not so nice ghost. She's often opening the lid on the washing machine mid cycle. She also likes to switch the AC to heat in the middle of summer when it's about 90 degrees. HVAC has been looked at many times, even replaced, and it still tends to happen. The same thing happens with the washing machine. They replaced it. The door still opens. Question for all of our fans here. Would you rather be terrified by like a Ouija board scary ghost? Or would you rather be terrified by a ghost that routinely just inconveniences you mildly? Because that sounds like this ghost. Like, yeah. Like, I don't know. I thought about it for a split second before I asked the question. It's like, oh, of course, you know, I would want the inconvenience guys. But I'm like, God, like messing with the AC unit while you're working. Picture like, so um, my lovely wife here, she's an interpreter and she gets to work from home and she can't have the AC running usually. So I'm just picturing two, situ In the room. two situations. Like, so one, she has to turn the AC on when she's on break to cool the room down. So what if the ghost shuts it off so it's always hot or while you're working just turns it on like w would you rather that or a ouija board ghost that scares you like i don't know that's like uh, it, it's very inconvenient yeah yeah well when you use that example that i almost want to be haunted by a ouija board ghost just because i already have that happening i don't know if you realize this but i'll turn my ac unit on like 10 minutes before i start my shift and i'll just have it on blast when I go back into the room, it's off. Ooh. Yeah. So it, it could be an electrical prop or it could be a ghost. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I honestly, I'm just thinking like a dryer would drive me crazy if like you keep putting clothes in there to dry and it never dries and you keep buying. Oh my goodness, that'd be so frustrating. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't know I hate laundry. I hate doing laundry as it is. So if I had to just continuously check on the laundry to make sure it got through its cycle, mm-mm. -mm. I get really mad real quick. Yeah, I feel like that that is actually, yeah. This this ghost is way more evil than one that's just like, I don't know, takes your soul. If this this, this is <laughs> I don't know. More evil than that. Mm, Continue. I don't know. <laughs> um uh, so the last bit of a story is about Mike. Mike lived here in the 90s. He's a Lakota Indian and has been a dear friend. Being on the Catoctin Mountain, many Indians have passed through this area. We have even had three large oaks on the property that 
Uh, we even have, oh, let me go back. We even have three large oaks on the property that make a perfect triangle. Hmm. But Mike always says when he comes to visit that the spirits are very happy with us, especially with our use of the land and how we honor it with our care. And that is the story of the two spirits on Castanel Vineyard's property located in Leesburg, Virginia. Um, I wouldn't mind running into Stuart. I think that would be kind of funny. Yeah. Although the way he haunts them is kind of scary. Slamming mm. doors, coughing when there's no one else in the building and you hear coughing. That's creepy. But the way those two act, it's like an old, almost like an old couple. Yeah. Have you guys ever had your relatives or your parents visit you and they just try to just start taking charge of your life and randomly doing things that drive you crazy? This seems like what like your parents like are living with you post death, like coughing, slamming doors. That's a grandpa type of thing or a dad thing. <laughs> Adjusting the thermostat. Adjusting the therm. Yes. <laughs> we figured it out. We know yeah. who they are. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good story. And we, yeah. We had a great time visiting. They were just so friendly there. The wines were delicious. There's this awesome outdoor place to go sit. We brought the dog and um the dog was very creeped out for some reason mm -hmm. towards the log cabin. We walked down to the log cabin and our dog, Jojo. He does not really bark at anything. No, he doesn't. Nothing really bothers him. He's a sweet border collie and really, really chill. But when we got there and we started sitting down and drinking the wines, we could see the log cabin in the distance. And he, it, the fur stood up on his back and he just went ballistic. And I had to get up and calm him down but he did not want to calm down mm -mm. and tom goes well, no. this place really is haunted <laughs> like yep. jojo can <clears throat> feel it we call him scooby-doo sometimes uh we use him in a lot of our paranormal <laughs> investigations um we'll take him to graveyards things like that usually he rolls in him or just looks to stones he doesn't care so when he gets tripped up it's like all right there's something sketch there yeah it really creeped me out actually i was like wow this yeah. is legit but and that's like a weird thing with like other stories it, animals when animals act weird you know what I mean? And we haven't had a whole lot of those stories quite yet. I just remember from movies and and before we even started this podcast, reading little stories like that, like, you know, you're walking your dog and the dog sees something, but you don't. It it creates some weird, I think, response in us um, as people, because first off, I truly believe like evolutionary wise, you know, we have this connection with dogs because we have that pack mentality, not to get too nerdy with it. So we've used dogs to help protect us and we have synergy. And so it's weird that I feel like subconsciously if you're out walking your dog at night and the dog gets freaked out automatically you're freaked out and, right. and if you guys own a dog you know what i'm talking about there's there's times they freak out where it's like oh shut up you're being yappy right but then there's other times when like, their hair stands up and there's that low growl well they feed off of you and then you feed off yeah. of them too so when they do mm. that like and it, when it doesn't happen very often mm -hmm. especially yeah i definitely feed off of that because like there's sometimes like with jojo it's like he'll bark at night and it's like all right whatever it's like it's his and you know your dog where it's like that stupid bark or like squirrel 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 but then your dog has that other freaky noise that he makes where it's like like their hair stands up and they don't bark but there's that low growl and they're frozen mm -hmm. and that's like what's freaky it's like when they do that because mm -hmm. then it's like they're they're startled about something and it's not an excited bark it's like, what are you? And right. it's like, you can't see it. Nope, you can't see and it. That's the scariest that's part. That's the freaky He's bark like... he did at first was that weird like hair stand up and that low growl, like something sketchy, but I don't know what. Yeah. Not like, oh, there's a squirrel or a deer bark. It was more like, what's going on? Right. So yeah, we'll try to take our, um, if you guys want us to, uh, for all the, you know, <clears throat> any haunted locations out there, we'll bring Scooby-Doo with us. We'll bring Jojo Rabbit and uh, he can uh, sniff out the ghosts for you. Yeah. Um, he just wants belly rubs. That's all he really wants. Yeah. So that was a good story. So I guess it's uh, time time for my story now. It is. It's your turn. <clears throat> That's going to be cool. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Ah. So while I was uh, studying for one of my MBA courses, um, I also was doing a deep dive on Reddit 
And I came up with this little gem, which is really cool. It has to do with the Civil War, and it's around Virginia. And it really hits on the fact of when a soul is lost because of trauma or a place that happens um, that has so much death in it and how that can trap people there in what you want to call it the nether realm, the ether, the space between spaces, the purgatory, purgatory, things of that. Let me drink one more time. Please my voice. <coughs> time now for the tale of the Forgottens. When I left the military, <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys. When I left the military, does that sound better? Mm -hmm. Okay. When I left the military and secured a new job, I had to move from Norfolk, Virginia, to a much to much closer to Washington D.C. I lived there alone for a year until my wife had finished her military service and was able to move. I was able to move her and the kids out to where I was living. When the time came, we settled on our place of our own finally. The place was a super old farmhouse that sat on 30 acres of farmland in Sharpsburg, Maryland. The house was a fixer-upper and rebuilt after a fire had destroyed the original. The original farmhouse was dated to a time of the Civil War. We ended up living in that house for five years, and those five years were filled with some strange occurrences. It all started with a discussion my oldest son would have with his mother about his room at night. He had the second largest bedroom, and at the time he was six, and our daughter was four. Our son would tell us how at night he would see a bearded, grizzled looking man with one leg leaning on a crutch and wearing what seemed like a, a tattered gray uniform. It would come into his room at night and talk to him, mm -hmm. dragging his leg, thud, drag, thud, drag. He would say he would talk about how he had to hide from the soldiers because they would kill him if they found him. We were confused, but figured he was just, it was some weird dreams. This went on for a couple of years though. And it stopped, and then it started again, but this time with our daughter. She started to tell us how she would see another figure with bandages wrapped around his head and chest. Hmm. This isn't where it all ended, though. There was an occasion where I was taking a nap on the couch in the living room, and my wife, my wife, my wife. <laughs> also his life. <laughs> my, my life. My life laid beside me. My wife laying opposite of me on the couch, was sitting and reading a book. When all of a sudden, she went pale. And I asked her, what's up? She said she saw something right behind me. She asked, did you see it? I turned and I said, no, I don't, I don't see anything. And I asked her, what, what did you see? She said it appeared to be a young looking soldier. He was missing an eye and an arm limping along behind the couch I was laying on, and then disappeared. Whatever or whoever it was, it was gone when I turned around. Needless to say, this terrified both of us. My wife has always been a bit more sensitive to the paranormal. On some occasions during summer evenings, she would see several lanterns just moving through the tree line and it would come towards our house, but then vanish once it got to the brick wall that surrounded our house. Mm. One day, while I was at work and the kids were at school, she told me she was laying on the couch and could see right up the stairs to the first landing and saw someone again. She explained that she had asked him, what's, what are you, what are you, what's your name? Can I help you? The entity, the entity said he was a Virginian and wanted to know where his family was and when he was able to go home. Now, I never witnessed or really saw anything happen, but I have had one of those experiences as well. 
bef before we switched around the rooms because of the kids saying they were spooky things, there were times that when the kid and I would go, uh, the wife and I would go to see our mother and I would be home alone for weeks at a time. No matter what I did, you always felt like someone was pacing behind you or, or watching you. And you would hear something that sounded like a, a cane or a crutch. Thud. Drag. Thud. Drag. Now, shortly before we ended up moving, there was a series of the same incidents that got to me this time, to the point where I could never really sleep in the upstairs room anymore. Every night I would be falling asleep, and then I would hear what sounded like someone pacing back and forth. They would start in the corner of the room and then make their way towards the window where they would stop. And I could hear what sounded like them putting their hands on the window so to reach up to look out the window. I would quickly turn and look over and the noise would stop. A few years later, after we'd left the house, I brought it up one day to my son, what I experienced when I was in his room. He answered that some that sometimes he would hear what sounded like a group of men just bantering back and forth in the corner. And when they got home, and when they would be able to, okay, banner, yeah, that sometimes he would hear what sounded like a group of men bantering about, about when they'd be able to get home and when they'd be able to have their leave. And sometimes he would even hear what sounded like the loading of a musket. Mm. Well, how would this kid know what the loading of a musket sounds like? Let's I mean, he's got, he's got military family, so I don't know. I guess so. I used, my son said he used to be afraid of the noises, but it happened so much, he kind of got used to it. I did some research on the house after we left. A little bit of history. Ah, I did some research on the house, and the only history of the house it was that it was rebuilt on the foundation of the house prior that dated back 200 years and that the area we, we lived in was close to the battlefield of Antietam that took place during the Civil War, which was the bloodiest day of fighting in American history. We guessed that the house must have been used as a field hospital for the Confederates. To this day, I still get chills to think about all the times we lived there, the things that we might have seen or unseen. And that noise of drag, thud, drag, thud. When can I go home? And that was the tale of the forgotten. Another historical haunting. That's, I, I started to wonder what's scarier, seeing someone, like actually seeing, like are they translucent? Mm hmm is that the right word? Transparent. When you see them like, like a ghost or is it like it looks like there's actually a person standing right there in front of you? Which one's scarier, you know, to know it's a ghost or be like, there's a real live person standing in my living room and then he just vanishes. Mm. It almost makes it um, more creepy, especially being in your own house. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it, what I like about it is just keep talking for a minute. And then I was also thinking, what would you prefer to see a ghost in your house or just to hear constant slamming doors or people talking, but never actually see anything, which one would actually instill a little bit more terror. And I think if they're not coming at you and they just constantly like pass by and then disappear into a wall or something, it's scary, but if they act like they don't see you, then it doesn't, I don't think it would bother me long term. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And just to give some context to, which I think this is what makes it eerie for me is, so the Battle of Antietam happened uh, during the Civil War. It's when the Confederacy moved up um, from Virginia into the north, into Maryland. Um, the The fighting there was absolutely devastating. Um, killed wounded or missing was over 22,000 American soldiers in one day, which for the time is, is a lot of death and carnage. Um, and it's interesting because I really feel like this goes back to the, the house story, the house in the woods where it's like, you can have so much trauma in an area mm -hmm. 
it feels haunted. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm right now actually, um, listening and you guys don't care about this, but the history of the battle of Stalingrad and like how millions of people died in a, in in an area the size of a small town, millions, like Mm -hmm. bodies on bodies. And you just think in this situation, which is you have so much death in a small area of people, you know, that I don't know what, like, that's got to feel weird. You got to feel that. And so what I liked about this story, not necessarily they were like, the other story was about ghosts, that there was a tragedy there. There's a darker element because it was um, that weird murderer guy um, that did that to the children. And again, those ghosts weren't necessarily scary. It's what happened to them. Mm -hmm. And this one is very interesting. It's a, a little bit different where it's like, these ghosts are not trying to necessarily scare people. No. It's almost like they're stuck. They're just stuck there. And like, that's what I really liked about that story. I thought was them being like, you know, when can I go home? Mm-hmm. They're going to find me. They're almost living out their last days, walking back and forth in the corner, looking out the window. Like it does sound like it was a field hospital. Definitely. Especially with all the injured hiding in there. Yeah. Um, So I, I don't know. I really like that because, I do think there are places where so many tragedies happen. That's where you're going to feel that paranormal experience. Like For that's sure. why when you go to a graveyard, you you feel something generally speaking, because there's a lot of death there, but that usually is not where it took place. That's exactly. The, that's the difference. Exactly. So that doesn't really harbor, you know, the souls in graveyards typically because that's not where they died. Mm-hmm. It's just where the bodies are kept. Yeah. So it, their souls aren't there. It's completely different. Yeah. And so, but when you go to like a military site, or a place where a mass tragedy happens, right. something like that, right. an sail asylum, places like that. It's just that's where you feel it. It's different. It's mm-hmm. way different. And so, yeah, the idea of like you being somewhere where all that took place, but for okay, love of God, do your research firsthand. Like, why would you then research the house afterwards? Like, I don't know. Like, after people we don't left. research houses. You mean while they were there? You mean after they already owned the house? Yeah, it's like research. he said. Like after we left, we researched it. Well, damn, dude. You yeah. put up with that crap for a long time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sounded like they were there for years. Yeah. Because the kids really grew. <laughs> and how much damage did you do to your son where you're like, yeah, you know, I see you guys not ah, deal it's with it. It's fine. Yeah. You waited a couple of years before you switched out room. So he just nagged you enough to where it's like, ah, okay, fine. I like that line where the, our son told us he saw a man with a gun in his room and we were confused. <laughs> what? <sighs> okay, dad. Parents, right? Good job. Oh, man. So a couple of things just to round out the episode again. Um, I, thanks again to this fantastic sponsor for, um, you know, giving us this information Castanel on this really Vineyards. cool. Castanel Woo. Vineyards. for this really, really fun episode. Some good information. And again, this is really what we wanted. If you have story ideas, please let us know. Um, we have some Halloween, fun Halloween episodes coming up for um, the day of Halloween, which we're really, really psyched about. And then we're also going to be segueing possibly into some other kind of things to read as Halloween passes. Um, we would like to get into more of a folklore and and spiritual stories uh, from different cultures, mm-hmm. different different things like that, going from Thanksgiving, Christmas holiday season, yeah. different religious takes on that, um, really branching out into that festivity part too. If you guys like it, great. If you don't, let us know. Um, but we really can only go based on what your feedback is like. So, you know, absolutely. Carly, you got anything to add to that? Yeah, definitely. Let us know what you're hoping for, what you would really enjoy listening to, and we'll do our best to find something to suit those needs because we we really enjoy doing our research and finding cool stories to share with you all. Mm-hmm. And we are getting close to Halloween. We're almost there, right? Yep. From Thomas Aarons and Carly Bird. This was Spirits and Ghost Stories. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.